For our land acknowledgement this morning, we will be speaking to something very specific to us right here at Westwood. We recognize that we are a part of Treaty 6, as is the Papa Chase First Nation. As we meet today in Beaver Hills House, we recognize that Reserve IR-136 was originally set aside for the Papa Chase First Nation as a part of the Treaty 6 Agreement. However, this part of the agreement was never formalized. This is the very land on which we here today are meeting at Westwood. May the fact that we are a part of this history encourage us to find ways in which we can cooperate with the Papa Chase First Nation in addressing this miscarriage of justice. Well, welcome to Westwood Unitarian this morning. We're so glad to have everybody here together with, with you. Um, Westwood is a compassionate community of free religious thought, inviting all people to rest, grow, and serve the world. This morning's service is full of tradition and ritual. We call it in-gathering because many take a break over the summer and this is a service that marks the beginning of a new season and a new church year. We install our new board of trustees and join together with the water communion ritual and, of course, we will sing. <laughs> uh, welcome once again to Westwood.
This morning, as always, our service is a collaborative effort. Your service leaders are the incoming Board of Trustees. You will meet us all formally in the board installation in just a moment. Dawn Hunter will lead us through this ritual. We also have our friend and neighbor Steve Bell here as our musician this morning and tech hosting is being provided by Hannah with backup from our president Lorian Kennedy and Bill Lee. For people on zoom if you have a chalice or candle nearby and wish to light it for the service now is the time. These are the words of Lois E. Van Leer. We light our chalice, not because we must, but because we may. We light our chalice, not because we have the truth, but because we each come bearing and seeking many truths. We light our chalice in connection across culture, distance, class, and language. We light our chalice that our religion may be a beacon of light, hope, and justice. We light our chalice to kindle our hearts and our minds. Please join in singing, Here We Have Gathered. The lyrics will be on the screen. It's song number 360, I believe. <laughs> everyone. My name is Dawn Hunter. Um, I'm a member here at Westwood and I'm honored to be called upon to install our board of trustees after such a somber hymn. <laughs> this is such a joyful occasion. Today we mark a transition in the life of this community from last year's board of trustees to this year's. Members who accept a position on our board of trustees care deeply about Westwood and are able at this time in their lives to contribute significant amounts of time and effort to see that the congregation grows and thrives. We honor those who have served so well in the past year, and we acknowledge the transfer of responsibility and power to those who will carry on. So please rise when I call your name. Lorian Kennedy, President. 
Should we clap with each one? <laughs> Maggie Davidson, Vice President. Jacqueline Willette, Treasurer. Brendan Niscaro, Secretary. Rebecca Patterson, Trustee. Carl Elric, Trustee. Pamela Bunge, trustee. And we have another trustee, uh, Margaret Schubert, um, who is away tending to the arrangements for her late mother's celebration of life. So you have been elected by the members of the Westward Unitarian Society at our annual meeting la held last May. Do you freely arrive before us today, willing to commit yourselves to these rules of honor and accountability? Yes. yes. Could last year's board members please come forward? I guess just to the mic, yeah. And Virginia, right, is on Zoom. Yes. While we welcome this year's board, we also take time to give thanks to the three members leaving the board, Susan Anderson, Alfred Falk, and Virginia Gillies for the care and hard work that they have offered to this community. Oh, okay. Hi, Virginia. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. Oh, I look over there. <laughs> we appreciate your efforts. The decisions you have made and the wisdom you have shown on behalf of us all. Because of your hard work and your generosity, Westwood has continued to be a strong and vital community. So thank you. So our retiring board members speaking together. We wish the new board well as you take on the torch of responsibility and the task of guiding this community of unions through the next year. To you, we entrust the results of our time and energy last year's, and we need you with you our support, support and good intentions. The job is not the to do, but we will help as we can when the need presses. In Unitarian Universalist congregations, the authority to elect our leaders belongs to the membership. So if you are a member of the congregation, you are invited to join in reading the act of installation displayed on the screen. Yeah, if we could stand, that'd be great. We call on you, whom we have elected, to care for this church community, and we pledge to you our support. We install you as our leaders and give you the power to make decisions on behalf of this community. We ask you to use your wisdom, your abilities, and your understanding of our religious principles to guide your decision making. We also remind you to keep us informed, to consult with us, and to call on us as you see fit. Thank you for understand taking this work for our community. Now the members of the Board of Trustees will give Westwood their pledge. With gratitude and a sense of responsibility, we accept the faith you have placed in us and the pledge to carry out our duties to the best of our abilities. We shall honor the traditions which have made this place strong while remaining open to generations and opportunities. Thank you. Can I just note that Elkin said that by heart? That's how long, how often he's been on board. 
The torch has been passed. May you who are retiring accept our appreciation for your work well done. For you continuing or beginning in a new board role, we hope that your time in office brings you a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. May this year bless all of Westwood as we move forward together in shared ministry. So now please join us in singing, I've Got Peace Like a River. We're going to sing verses one, two, three, and six. The lyrics are on the screen. These words are from the late Richard Wagamies. From our very first breath, we are in relationship. With that indrawn draft of air, we become joined to everything that ever was, is, and ever will be. When we exhale, we forge the relationship by virtue of the act of living. Our breath commingles with all breath and we are a part of everything. That's a simple face of things. We are born into a state of relationship and our ceremonies and rituals are guides that lead us deeper into that relationship with all things. Big lessons, relationships never end, they just change. In believing that lies the freedom to carry compassion, empathy, love, kindness, and respect into and through whatever changes. We are made more by that practice. Where have you been this summer? And what have you been doing that brought sustenance to your personhood? Here at Westwood, it is our practice to gather water from places we go and from our homes to pour into our communal bowl when we return to Westwood in the fall. Hence the name Water Communion. Sometimes we just pour the water into the communion bowl. Other times we have a few things to say as well. And then there are the times when we've forgotten our water at home or even forgotten to collect it when we were away which I do each and every summer. <laughs> I, I spend my summer at a lake <laughs> and the water's always virtual. 
Oh, well. For those times, we have emergency water in those little uh, cups up there. So please help yourself. People on Zoom, if you type into the chat, Pamela can speak your words and add water on your behalf. Um, so Jacqueline already began by pouring our holy water into the bowl. Um, that's the water that remains from our last water communion. Um, after all the water is poured in, it is um, sterilized and then cooled and put back in the jar to be used for rituals throughout the year. Imagine, oh, um, all right. So you may add your water when you're ready. Um, if you'd like to speak, please come over to this mic or that mic while you're done, when you're done pouring. Maybe I'll start. <laughs> talk first, talk first, okay. Um, so this is water that means a lot for uh, a lot of reasons this summer. Um, I did have a lovely time at my family cottage. At least I had two weeks of lovely time at my family cottage, splashing in the lake and drinking the water and um, seeing friends. Then the third week I had a small furry visitor show himself or itself. <laughs> and I spent my last week um, and I added tears to the water of my <laughs> summer while I, I battled these, these poor, poor little things that it's not their fault that they're not supposed to be in them. So that was heartbreaking, but um, I did something right because my sister was there the next week and didn't see anybody. So. But someone on Zoom who'd like to speak this morning. This is from Bill Lee. I bring water from the William Lutsky YMCA swimming pool where I swim every week. I haven't been anywhere exotic this summer, so this is representative of generalized Edmonton water, the river where I go for walks, um, not swims. Um, and just Edmonton is sometimes when it's not smoky, quite lovely, and I have enjoyed being here. Um, but I wanted to say something also about what having a little break over this summer means and then coming back. You know, we come to a congregation like this for spiritual reasons and personal reasons and to develop our own sense of values and our place in the world and what we're going to be doing in the world in this life. But there's something that we do together that no person can do individually and that's create a sense of community. Um, we had a wonderful open house yesterday. It was just so exciting to see so many people, so much help, so much enthusiasm and a real feeling of community. We care for each other. We care about more than just each other. Um, and it's, it's so fulfilling. And I hope everybody can share in that <clears throat> and bring in a few more people who maybe don't know this is possible for them too. So here goes my water. Yes, I'm going to be needing the emergency water also. I was really fortunate this summer to be at several lakes. I was by the Kootenai Lake where Miguel and I go every summer, but I also did some kayaking on Big Lake and Jackfish Lake, and I spent some time with friends out near Miquelon Lake. And then of course there was the time spent here in Edmonton, which this is such a beautiful city and so many good people. So yeah, I come back feeling really full. Yeah, I too always forget 
to bring water, to think about water, to dump water. But um, I just really wanted to kind of express my appreciation for all the water that has fallen on my head this summer. The beautiful rain showers that we've been having um, and being a gardener, it's been very welcome. <laughs> to have all this water. If I had really thought about it in the, where I live, we have rain barrels. I could have brought a rain bar some water from the rain barrel, right? That would have made so much sense, but I didn't. So anyway, thank goodness for rain. Uh, I guess we had a kind of quickie summer holiday. Um, but I think the one that we kind of liked the most was o Okanagan Lake, even though like it was the middle of August and temperatures were almost 40 and it was really smoky. Um, we were swimming in the lake because there was barely anybody there. Lindsay, I'm gonna, I do have to take advantage of the uh, emergency water. What I had planned to do was get water from the rain barrel outside the church, but I didn't get here in time. <laughs> uh, but it's just for the, the, the garden that I'd been able to water the front garden and that. And we, uh, they replaced our dead tree in the, in the front boulevard and, and put in an oak tree. So uh, the hose doesn't reach there, even when I try and spray it far away. Um, so I've been taking uh, uh, pots of uh, rain barrel water to water the oak. So hopefully it'll take uh, take the water and, and continue to be here for the next hundred or so years. Mm -hmm. I'll go next. I'm Susan, and uh, for once I remembered. Well, actually, it was pretty inadvertent. Like a miracle, I have water from the source about which I'm going to talk this morning. <laughs> anyway, at first, I want to say I love this service because um, there's so many beautiful interesting stories that are shared and uh, also it connects us but it gives me a chance to remember to consciously think about how interconnected we are and how interconnected water is and how life-sustaining and uh, life-giving and uh, life-saving water can be especially this summer with all the fires um, so this water is from the well of the house that I lived in during my high school years and which my father lived in for 54 years and just sold this spring. And it's beautiful, cool, clear water. And so we moved him from there into our small one bedroom cabin and uh, the water there is very good too but it's not as good as from the well at the house so uh, we're really going to miss it but anyway i somehow i put some of the water from the house into some uh, containers to keep f food that we had to bring from the house to the cabin and this ended up uh, frozen all the way back to edmonton <laughs> so i was delighted when i saw the sign on here save for Westwood water service. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, so this is my water. Good morning, my name is Pamela. Um, I too, I'll be using the water that's that's offered today. 
Um, we had a wonderful trip to Waterton Lakes this summer, and um, I didn't go swimming in the lake, but I stood in the lake, so that was really nice. It was a beautiful holiday with some friends of ours. We spent some time out at our cabin at Thunder Lake, um, which is a lake I don't swim in, but we were able to go kayaking a couple of times. And then we also ended up going to um, Kelowna to visit my mom. Um, our timing was a little bit off because we got there the day after the fire started. So we weren't able to do much outside, but we were able to go swim in the lake once. So this water represents all the water from our holidays. I was able to take uh, two trips this summer. Uh, one was to Colorado, where I had a family reunion with my two older brothers and uh, some nieces and nephews. And we did some walking and even did a little bit of pickleball, although it wasn't, I wasn't the star player there. <laughs> um, and also I was able to do a biking trip, have a biking trip in uh, Canmore, in our beautiful mountains in Mount Banff. Banff. We uh, biked to uh, Johnson Canyon and also some in the um, Peter Lougheed uh, Park there. And uh, it was uh, it, just so grateful that I'm still able to do these things. I'm Jen. Uh, this summer I spent a week at my parents and was able to visit my sister and her husband and my nephew. And uh, we did go wading in the nearby lake, but I did not bring water, so I'm glad there's water here. And this represents, because I'm just looking for everyone else. Um, I went off on a holiday and just got back. Um, and I had a chance to visit uh, friends in Victoria. So I guess this represents the good old Pacific Ocean, because she lives on Oak Bay, just right down the street, is the good old ocean. So this is uh, to commemorate meeting my wonderful friends that I've kept in touch with many, many years. One of my friends, Maureen, she hired me as a contractor way back in 1992. And we've been friends ever since. And the other one is for my friend, Robin, who I've met and we, were, we did a goddess tour in uh 2009 so long-term friendships commemorating the water that i gathered my name is Carmen. Uh, for many years, my summer has been dominated by volunteering at the Folk Festival. Um, and this year, I um, went on the Nighthawks crew. And um, of course, Nighthawks means you work through the night, protecting the hill or protecting the Folk Fest buildings because it's still a park until the Folk Festival and then it's a park again afterward. Um, so I had to chase away, you know, teenage boys from climbing on the rigging and so forth. Nothing more than that. Um, but I remembered again why I, uh, one of the reasons why I 
uh, retired early from Canada Post because my body can't do nights anymore. So I don't know if I'll be doing this next year. We'll see. Um, it took me uh, two days, nights, to get on to a night shift and then a day and a half to get off. And so brain fog in between that. So anyway, um, so I, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't know about this, of course. Um, and it was very rainy um, for most of the time before the festival. And I knew that you wouldn't have appreciated muddy water in here. Um, so this water in my little maple uh, bottle is from my filtered water at home. And I just wanted to tell a quick story. So I have a, um, a little altar in my bedroom and it includes a little fluted glass of filtered water that I keep there, but also uh, it has um, some um, things that I have really appreciated from the 2019 um, solstice service that I attended at Westwood. And it was, um, I think somebody had knitted a little sun and there was a rock. It was representing the four uh, directions. And so I keep that on my altar. So I decided to bring this, just filled with water from home. Hi, I'm Edda. I forgot to bring water. I was thinking when I got the notice, oh yeah, then I forgot. Uh, I've been to various places this summer, not, not very far, into Lake Mechelon and uh, just walks in Edmonton to the uh, stormwater pond, but you can't go in there to get water. There are signs telling you that we should not do that. Okay. So I, I'm collecting rainwater. I have collected an awful lot of rainwater. And uh, I'm very glad that I, I appreciate having rain. I'm very glad I don't, my, my, my pipes don't leak. So I'm quite safe in my house. So I'll pour some water in, uh, in, in gratefulness to, to uh, our climate, I guess. It's protecting us. We don't have fires right here and we're, we're surviving. I don't want to rush anyone. Is there anybody else and anyone on Zoom who would like to say some, something else? Okay. Oh, listening to all the, the stories after mine, um, I'm going to say that Edmonton hogged all the water this summer. <laughs> In Saskatchewan, the, the crops were really short and it was just amazing the difference coming back here to this lush Edmonton that had been rained on and rained on and rained on. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I really um, got a sense of, of gratitude for the temperateness that we have here. So imagine if you will, that all our sustaining waters are blended together in this bowl, spoken aloud, typed in the chat or held in our hearts. Whether it is the water we drink to stay alive, the water that feeds our food and our planet, the water we swim in or rest beside, whatever image you hold, imagine for a moment 
the essence of all of these beautiful in images gathered here in this one place. Please raise your arm in a gesture of blessing and join me as we bless this communal water. All water is holy water from the sky or from the sea. It is not holy because we pray over it. It is not holy because we gather it in a church. It is holy because it is the stuff of life returning and cycling through the plants and animals, oceans and streams, cells and seeds, again and again and again. May it be so. Please join in singing Blue Boat Home, a perpetual favorite. The lyrics are on the screen. <laughs>
These are the words of Bernadette R. Burns. For the joyful, may jubilant songs echo in our hearts well beyond fading memories. For the sorrowful, may gentle songs of solace bring lasting healing to our hearts and minds. For the angry, may we join our voices together in songs of protest and hope. For the mindful, may we sing the praises of Earth's beauty and honor the unique songs of all beings. And for all of us here in our community and in our world, may we sing to the morning and evening stars as they guide our journeys. We're now going to extinguish our flame. May the light of our chalices give light and warmth to our community when we are joyful and when we despair. And may we feel the warmth spread from our circle to wider and wider circles until all know they belong to the one circle of life. 